Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. It's been a while since I've seen you guys in the PoE community. So for Heist League, I wanted to talk to you guys about the League Starter that I'm playing. Now before I give you guys my build, there's a couple things I need to preface this with. Um, the skill that I'm going to be building around is the new skill, new skills, plural. Um, the new skills we're going to be talking about in this video specifically are going to be the current new skill, Hex Blast, that you can see here. And then this is going to be our single target. And the other new skill is a support gem called Impending Doom. Just for clarification, we're going to be talking about a lot of new mechanics here. There is Impending Doom, which is attached with a supported curse skill. The curse has to be self-casted. Then there is the regular Doom, which is tied to cursing now. Doom is just a reflection of how strong your curse is. As your curse is on a target, it will build Doom until it reaches ma its maximum potential. This is just because of the new mechanics that are in the game. If you are playing a regular build, none of this shit matters to you at all. But for this build, it's very important. So, let's get started. We are going to be playing an Impending Doom Hex Blast Hierophant. I do have a tree for an Occultist, but I'm not going to be talking much about it because it's not what I'm League starting as. I will include it in the link for you guys. So, let's get started. Why Impending Doom Hierophant? Okay, so, Impending Doom is going to be used for our area clear. The way Impending Doom works is we have a curse, we cast said curse. As you can tell by the curse AoE on this character, this is my mana RF from last league. I have literally nothing invested into curses and I'm not using ink AoE. And you can currently see how big the AoE is. Playing this as an invested curse character, expect your curses to hit the whole screen. So that's good. So the area clear could potentially be there. Now, when you use a supported skill now, we'll be linking it with impending doom. So this would be as an example, conductivity with impending doom so we tap it then you have two other support gems now we don't know exactly what support gems work with it because they've never been played before and the tags are a little awkward but as an example in my notes tab here that will be included you can see the potential things i'm going to have to test on day one of the league so we've got conductivity and elemental weakness as our two curses for clearing purposes clearing implying map clear we're only going to use regular conductivity because, you know, you don't need to cast all these buttons to kill white mobs, right? So you conductivity with impending doom. Then some potential hypothetical links we could use added chaos, in KOE, intensify, lightning pen, archmage, second wind, arcane surge. Again, we don't know what works until we actually play it. It's weird because you're supporting a curse, but the curse doesn't do damage, the support gem does. So you need to scale the support gem. Sometimes in previous PoE experiences, by adding a support gem to a skill, the skill gets more tags, but that's kind of confusing. So, step one, you curse targets with your skill. Step two, you need to detonate your curse. Now, with the new curse mechanics, there are a number of ways to detonate. We're going to be talking about one way. One quick way to detonate is by simply using Hex Blast. When you use Hex Blast, it will remove the hex, which by removing the hex, the hex is the curse. Cursing and hexing is the same thing, right? It's just curses are not a thing anymore, so they call them hexes. So when you remove the curse, the damage of your hex blast will proc the doom, the uh, impending doom, and hex blast will do its own thing. However, hex blast is only for single target. It does a little bit of AOE, but this is not a pure hex blast build. This is going to be scaling Impending Doom, so Impending Doom can offer clear speed for us while using Hex Blast as a single target. So, to understand the mechanics, we AoE Curse, we wait not very long, and then we explode it. Now, the whole purpose of waiting, let's explain the new nodes that are on the tree now. When you curse a target, it will gain 10 Doom per second, up to 30 Doom, so 3 seconds is max Doom. However, there are new nodes on the tree. Faster Doom gain here, faster Doom gain here, and faster Doom gain here. So that's 150% Doom rate. On top of this, you also have Malicious Intent, which is for starting Doom. And then you have Skittering Runes for 10 maximum Doom, which is really for bossing, you know, maybe like tanky red beasts, just really tanky things in general. So, you curse the target, 
it already has starting doom and it builds up stacks very quickly. So you will pretty much immediately hex blast when map clearing. Because hex blast states that it will pop it, which will then cause impending doom to explode. Now here's where the problem lies. According to Doom Blast, which is what Impending Doom does, Impending Doom has a charge mechanic and a cooldown time. Unfortunately, we think this means Impending Doom can only proc three times when Hex Blast starts to detonate, or it means you can... or it... I don't really know. It's, it's very confusing. There's a lot of theories of how this works. Nothing is confirmed and nothing is explained by GGG yet, unfortunately. So, there's two things. Basically... You could AoE the pack, and then you pop it with Hex Blast, and every single monster explodes, and the charge mechanic is, is just meant for, like, other builds that are, like, crazy spamming things and immediately detonating. I'm not really sure. Or the vice versa, where you Hex Blast the target, and then when that Hex Blast target dies, it explodes with Impending Doom, right? Or even before it dies, Impending Doom goes off, which then hits other targets, which then explodes, right? So... In the event that this is the bad way and it only procs three times, this is part of the reason we're playing Hierophant. Now, by going Hierophant, we have the ability to scale the most AoE possible, which means we're hitting as many possible targets as we can with only three hits, okay? So, as Hierophant, we have the ability to scale AoE via Illuminated Devotion, which is 25% AoE while you have Arcane Surge. Your arcane surge will be automated like the RF character with arcane with uh, sorry on your left click. So if you look at this character, when I hold down left click, my arcane cloak is on and I have arcane surge. I'm just going to keep holding left click. You can see when it falls off, arcane surge is still on. There's a small frame when it falls off, but for the most part, you have 100% uptime on arcane surge, which is great because that also covers your ailmental immunity. Now. The nice thing is that this damage we get from Arcane Cloak that grants added lightning damage will apply to the Doom Blast from your impending doom. Why? Because it's tagged as a spell, unless it has a unique mechanic, again, we're unaware of. It specifically says it's a spell. So that means your impending doom will gain the benefit of your Arcane Cloak, which is good because you don't really need a lot of damage to kill, you know, basic mobs in uh, in PoE. You do need a lot of damage for the higher end stuff, but for map clearing, you typically need like a more smooth build and not just a high damage build until you're much higher tier maps. So, another thing to talk about is the way Hex Blast works. Now, when we get to a single target, like a strong guy, right? This is where Hex Blast comes in. So on a boss, I will really fast just cast Ellie Weakness, Conductivity, and then I will move away and wait for about a second and a half. I think there is some visual indicator on our skill that informs us when we're at max stack. So when we're at max stack, here's what happens. We detonate Hex Blast. Now, what max stack means is that Doom has achieved its maximum. As Doom is ramping up, your Ellie Weakness and your Conductivity are continuously uh, reducing the target's resistance, because that is essentially what Curse Effect does, right? So the chance to shock goes up, the lightning res go down, and then from Ellie Weakness, all the res goes down. Now, this is the interesting part about Hex Blast. Let's all read this line together out loud. Chaos damage with hits is resisted by lowest resistance instead, which means the chaos damage we're doing with Hex Blast is affecting them as if it's lightning damage, like lightning resistance, because lightning is going to be their lowest res due to conductivity using lightning pen on hex blast and elemental weakness. The benefit of this is when we use Archmage now with hex blast, and on top of using Archmage, we get the bonus of Arcane Cloak. This damage is all lightning, but even though we're playing a chaos build, we are using conductivity and we're using. Uh, Ellie Weakness, which means our lightning damage is hitting as if they have negative 136 lightning res, and so is our chaos. However, this does not mean you can scale percent elemental damage, because your elemental damage is only from your flat lightning on spells, your arcane cloak, and your archmage, and your chaos damage is only from your hex blast and your impending doom, which means you scale spell damage. 
because spell damage works for everything since they're all tagged as spells. This means you want to really capitalize on things like Arcane Surge, which gives a spell damage multiplier, Control Destruction for spell damage, using Wands as your implicit for spell damage. You're basically going full spell damage. Now, since we have the basic things fleshed out with the build, let's start talking about why I'm playing Hierophant. So, to go ahead and move through the POB, Hierophant versus Occultist. Now, when I play my builds, the number one thing I want to make sure of is my build can survive. Because forcing a defensive layer into a build is a lot more difficult than forcing damage onto a build. So the Hierophant is an agnostic, mind over matter, acrobatics, phase acrobatics build. This means we're looking at possibly 5k plus life, since it's more life than this character, with 40 to 50% of damage going to my mana, 40% if I don't use Cloak of Defiance or a Shapercraft, and then we will have a bubble of over 4k. So that's already a 12k plus effective life build. On top of this, we will still gain access of Acrobatics and Phase Acro. People are going to wonder where the damage comes from. The damage comes from scaling your curse effect, scaling your mana, and on top of this as Hierophant, we get access to Divine Guidance. Divine Guidance gives us Transfiguration of Mind, which means increases and reductions to maximum mana also apply to damage at 30% of their value. We just recently did this with our Righteous Fire build, and it worked out fantastic. We'll be using this exact scenario to scale our damage on both ends because global damage will scale lightning global damage will also scale the chaos portion and in the future if we manage to find an impulsa the impulso will gain huge benefit off of the fact that we're scaling aoe now going into one more part the occultist which i will talk about slightly is different in the sense of occultist is more curse driven the problem with Occultist is it feels weird for the first time to scale Curse Effect but not rely on defensive curses. Because if you're using a Blasphemy, that completely changes the way the build works, which is why I don't want to talk about running Blasphemy and Curse on Hit. That is all very different from manually cursing now. It is not the same. You do not get Impending Doom. It does not work. You can get a fixed amount of Doom, but that's we're not talking about that. So the Occultist variant goes Glancing Blow. Aiming for block cap, Arumis would block cap us. Now, the difference here is, we're at 185 life, we can polish and cut about 10, 10 life nodes, well, 10 nodes to come down here and grab Heart of the Warrior and basically be 215% life. This means we can scale maximum life gain, or 10% of maximum life gained as energy shield. That, for example, is a craft you can get um, from Bench from Syndicate. Furthermore, you can use stuff like chat. What is the keystone called? Can someone link it for me? The uh, the corrupted faith, I think it's called. Do I corrupted soul? Gain twenty percent of maximum uh, life as energy shield. So you can scale energy shield off of your life pool. Being as we're an occultist, you can scale your energy shield with vile bastion. So your energy shield can still replenish itself via vile bastion, via clearing mobs to get ten percent of your energy shield per second. On top of this. We can use an Energy Leech Support Gem because our Energy Shield is going to pr protect our Life Pool. So anytime we get hit, we're going to take damage. So that's constantly refreshing. Furthermore, for our life, because we can bump our life to be much higher, at a 200% life build, you can expect to get 7k if you're prioritizing life. This means we can actively make use of life on block. This means we can life on block for sustain for our Life Pool. On top of this, we don't have to do shenanigans with Zealot's Oath or Agnostic, or sorry, Zealot's Oath or Eldritch Battery, and our energy shield is still sustaining itself. Now, the benefit of going Occultist over Hierophant is Occultist makes use of Elemental Equilibrium. Hierophant cannot properly make use of Elemental equilibri Equilibrium in an easy way with my build because we are using Arcane Cloak, which will add flat lightning to everything, which will break our EE. Occultist doesn't, I'm not going mana based on the Occultist which means you can use like flat cold dispels or flat fire dispels because not cold flat fire flat lightning because the occultist variant will be cold based the reason we use frostbite and ellie weakness versus the lightning based is because of void beacon void beacon reduces 20 cold res which means you will have 20 cold res minus on top of frostbite 
on top of Ellie Weakness with more scaling and curses, and you will get the uh, advantage of Elemental Equilibrium, which is another big hit. So that is where the Occultist damage comes from. Occultist comes from really stripping the resistance, where Hierophant comes more from base damage off of their Lightning via um, Archmage and other sources. So that's the, and then of course the difference in defensive layers between the two. So that pretty much covers everything I could talk about with it. Um, as for making the build feel better, I can't really give you guys a leveling portion and talk too much about it because this is brand new and we've never played it, so I don't want to misguide you guys. I'd rather wait, be honest, and then release like a gameplay video in two days or so after I've played through it. Both of them feel like they're going to be tanky enough. The question is, is am I going to do enough damage? Hierophant seems like it's got really good damage. I've got options of scaling even further by going Elemental Overload, which would only scale the Lightning portion, but it's a fat multiplier for only three-point downside. It's probably the strongest three-point investment I can get, but I don't know how consistent it's going to be. That's why I'm not picking it up. I really hate inconsistency in builds. It feels really bad. I don't want my build to do 40% more damage 10% of the time and rely on that 10%, you know? Especially because Hex Blast or Hex... Hex, whatever it's called, only has a 4% base crit chance, which will make it really inconsistent. But then again, you have explosions proccing all over the place, so that may feel consistent. The other thing between Hierophant and um, Occultist is Occultist will get Profane Bloom, and Occultist can curse Hexproof enemies. However, Hexproof has now been changed, and you can curse Hexproof enemies, they're just unaffected by your curse, which I do believe means your Doom is still stacking. Now, the, the advantage of Hierophant, not really advantage, but the way you would kill your Hexproof is essentially you still have Lightning Pen, you still have Archmage Support, you still have Arcane Guard for a huge amount of Lightning, you're still doing damage. You're not 100% relying on your Curses, right? You still will have a six-link Hex Boom to just smack him in the face, right? So that pretty much comes down to it. Um, to go through the, the notes really fast as to what I was talking about, these are some potential links we have set up for... Um, Impending Doom, which we talked about earlier. These are the potential links for Hexboom. Um, then you have your Arcane Cloak, which is Arcane Cloak, Ink Duration, Efficacy, Arcane Surge. Note to self, you do not want quality on Arcane Cloak because you don't want Arcane Cloak to last longer than Arcane Surge. Because if it lasts longer, Arcane Cloak doesn't start its duration till it ends. So it's really important to try to match their duration so you can keep the uptime on it. That pretty much covers... Everything I could tell you guys, at least as of right now. Chad, did I miss anything or are we good? I, I think we're, we're pretty much good. Um, I, I wish I could talk about it more, but I just don't really know. Um, I have found some interesting ways to, to basically fit Intuitive Leap into the build. Not required by any means. It just saves points. It's going to be a goal in SSF here since I can bounce up, grab Skittering Runes, grab my Prodigal Perfection. This is just a good node, which is why I have it. Then there's Mystic Bulwark. Are both curses on the same link? So this is this is a big one, right? The, the thing about both curses being on the same link is ideally we would want both curses to be on the same link. Now for Occultus, it would be Tri-Curse, which I can't get into that one. That's mainly why I'm starting with this character because there's just still a lot of unanswered questions. Um, the Resist Fire Cold Helm. Oh, you, you can link that for the Occultist version, actually, yeah. So, for the notes here, as long as your impending doom is doing enough damage to clear, you can use two curses on the same link. But I don't know how much damage it's going to do on the clear if it only has three personal explosions per cast of Hexboom. So this is where we're just not really sure because we don't know yet, and GGG has not really given us proper information on this that pretty much covers it remember when you're mapping you don't need to wait nearly as long to explode because you don't need maximum effect to kill white mobs and when you're bossing you will be rewarded for having it on longer simply because the longer it's on the more they're losing resistance now there is another way to play the build which is kind of a little bit weirder and this may be what i transitioned to where Instead of manually casting your second and or third curse, you would put your second or third curse on Blasphemy or on Curse on Hit or on Trigger or on Bane. And what happens when you do that is the curse applies but does not gain Doom, which means you still curse, but Hex Touch will not boom it. So that means you could just use one curse like Conductivity 
And then you have Ellie Weakness and Enfeeble curse it on Bane. So you curse with Bane and it's on for like 12 or 13 seconds, maybe 20 seconds. And all you're doing then is Conductivity and then Hex Touch. Conductivity, Hex Touch. Conductivity, Hex Touch, right? Does that sort of make sense? The, the play style of where to go with the builds will flesh themselves out as we play more, but this is pretty much everything I could kind of come to at the day. Um, there's also the helmet. I don't remember what it's called. For occultists that gives uh, at nearby enemies have minus or, or increased resistance penalty. Chat, do you, can someone link you? I don't remember what it's called. It's a really big brain helmet, but it's actually nuts for occultists. Does anyone have it? I, I, I forgot what it's called. Scuffed YouTube video. Anyone have it? Nobody's got it? It's okay. Well, the fire rhyme? Rhyme? rhyme I have mal I have malice. Perfect. I have malice. I have malice would work really well with a cultist because you're going to bring the target's resistance so far down. This does not increase the resistance. If the target is negative, it will pull them more negative. If the target is positive, it will make it more positive. That's the way this helmet works. This would not work with Hierophant because it's cold and fire explosion and we're lightning based. Unless you change it. So anyway, that's pretty much about it. I will link the POB for you guys down in the comments below. And if you want to hop into the stream, we'll be live or uh, league starting with it live. If it doesn't work out and I try it for a couple of days and I don't like it, I do have a minor build to fall back on. Um, but I'm not really going to go into the minor right now. That's be a separate video for a separate reason. So take care. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Don't forget, if you like the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care. Have a wonderful time, everybody.